Hey everyone. So a lot of you have probably seen my crash that I had at Anglesey. If you haven't already, have a look on my other videos on my channel. However, now I'm left with the task of fixing the bike. So it took like say, a massive impact. There was quite a bit of damage to be fair on the frame and all the fairings. What I'm gonna show you is how I fix up some of the fairings this time. So there's the bike looking pretty sorry for itself. You can see the back of the frame is bent. Got a bit of work to do. I'll have to switch that frame over and get a new one. Probably won't show a build, rebuild video if you like. Once you've seen me do the bike anyway, it's pretty much the same thing, but obviously just switching out for a brand new frame. The tank cover, however, has taken quite a battering as you can see. So big scratches, some holes down there, crack there. And this side is where it took a massive impact. So you can see huge crack that I've got across there. So I think I can repair it. I mean, it's it's not horrendous. I'll have to just have a go at um, patching up the gap, fiberglassing in underneath, and then patching in the fiberglass on top and just smoothing and sanding it down. Here's the back, and you can see the damage, what happened there. Now that's not repairable because I've got nothing to repair the end with. Mud guard, I think was all okay. There is a crack there, so I'll fill that in and that should be all right. So there's the tank, flat like a pancake. <laughs> I mean, it's proper dinted in there and I'm surprised it hasn't punctured through. This side's just as bad. I mean, there's dints on the top and there's a huge fold in the tank there. So I've got a new tank ordered, ready to put back on. I'll obviously take the fuel tap off and all that lot. Uh, still full of petrol actually, but uh, stick that in the wife's car or something <laughs> rather than leaving it in there. I'll go around, I'll show you what's what I've spotted so far and what I'm gonna have to do. So. Number one, the worst bit, the frame at the back. So you can see it's definitely knackered the frame. Um, what's happened is the impact's been on this side and it's pushed it down this way. And that side's where the original um, bracket would have been. So you can get the frames obviously straightened. There's not much point because the price it costs as a starting price for them to do it is more than it costs to buy a brand new frame. So I've got a new frame ordered already. Well, I say ordered, bought already. And then I'll go through the exact same process I did last time, stripping it down and preparing it for race bikes. So obviously cutting off all the stands and all the rest of it. And again, I've done this already once. It's in my videos, if you've seen this for the first time, um, and I show how I do all that. Shocks, I think, are okay. I'm really hoping it's not damaged the shocks. I bent them. There's no actual damage to them. It's whether it's just had too much of an impact and it's bent them out of line. So hopefully not. Wheel, apart from it being covered in grass, I think is actually okay. Back one seems to spin all right. Again, I will take this off, take the tire off, put it on something to spin it and see how it looks. The uh, shark fin at the bottom, that's had a bit of a bend to it, but I just bent it back for now. What caused all of it is this bloody foot peg and I lent it a bit too far and clipped it and lifted my rear wheel off the ground. You can actually see, well, you could, that all around here, there's a big rash of where it's lifted and spun the wheel across the tarmac. So yeah, lifted the back end, spun it around on me, and that's what's caused all this in the first place. Smashed my GoPro back bracket. That obviously has this shunted down, hit off the tire and bust it, but at least I got the footage from it. Engine wise, it looks absolutely fine. Obviously I've not run it since the crash, but there's no damage to that. That's the main thing because obviously that's the, well, the most expensive part of it. So that seems to be okay. No damage to under there either, which is amazing. Moving around to the front. So the bars, it smashed them off across the top completely. There's the bars, so nice wonky bar there. Uh, but anyway, that's totally useless. It also, it smashed off all the master cylinder, all the clutch lever, the whole lot clean off. Unfortunately, it smashed my rev counter off as well, which was here. And I had to order a new one of those. And it bent all the number board, all the bracket that sits there. What else is there? The yokes have had a, quite a big impact on the top there. I don't know what's hit them, but something has. So I need to check that they're straight and that they're not obviously uh, damaged in the first place. Same with the bottom ones. I can't believe that the actual radiators had no impact whatsoever. There's no damage on that. I'll have to check all that stuff over, make sure there is no leaks once it starts back up again. Onto this side. So again, no damage to my engine, nothing. No damage on there. It all looks fairly shiny, to be honest. It has pushed the exhaust in a bit there, into this bracket here. Obviously, you can see there, that shouldn't look like that. So that's bent that in. And uh, there's a bit of a dent in the 
exhaust can. This side seems to be okay. There's a bit of gravel rash or something there. So I'll have to check that out. Hopefully, once I take this all off, and take this off. That can just be gently bent back down away from here. And hopefully that's okay. My worry was that the exhaust studs at the front might have snapped or something like that, but they seem to be okay at the minute. There's, there's no damage around there. So that's it. I mean, obviously it's gonna cost me a bit to get this back together. It's not totally destroyed. Um, because obviously if the engine was damaged, then I'd have a major problem. So the stuff like bars and all that sort of stuff, fairly easy to replace, master cylinders, all that sort of thing. It's when it gets down to obviously the frame and the engine. So I'm gonna have a go at sh probably showing how I do this stuff really. So that's mid, obviously mid repair. It's not gonna finish looking like that. Okay, looking at this in a bit more detail, I think what I'll have to do is use a Dremel and cut, cut that along those lines to make a neat line. And then I'll start to fiberglass on the back side and filler that in. Um, if it's really bad, I might use a bit of thin mesh, the metal mesh that you use on cars and stick it to the back just to stop the fiberglass coming through the opposite side. This sort of stuff, just be a case of a rub down, light filler on top. Same with this, small holes like that, I'll end up just again, sticking a knife in there, chiseling it out a little bit so it's a smoother hole than that. And then same process, a bit of, bit of fiberglass on the back side and then the p40 filler on the front side smooth it down this one's going to probably be one of the worst bits i suppose i think i might just pull that off again neaten that off and then fiberglass on the inside filler on the top all right let's highlight the bits that i need to fix how it's looking at the minute which i know looks crap because <laughs> it's just a massive hole with loads of scratches everywhere um but what i've done is I've, I've taken off the flaky bits of gel coat and then it'll make it easier to get a decent um bond with the uh, fiberglass afterwards a few cracks like i said there again same thing another one there that one which is again just scuffs and another hole there so next stage will be to start filling those in anyway that gives you an idea of the way that i'm going to tackle this it's like a knob doesn't it <laughs> all right ready with my sheet so if you want to blend this in you need to tear the edges like that so they're all frayed and not like that because obviously once that's in there you'll see a hard line whereas if you want to try and make it look like it blends with whatever's there free all the edges so it's just a case of just tearing it a bit well i should have measured that out but i couldn't be bothered the thing is with this once you start you've got to get on with it because that'll harden really fast it'll knacker the brush as well once i mix the hardener in mix it all in that'll be ready to go i'll layer that on top of there press it down and you dab it in so you, you first of all wet the underneath of that so it's all wet stick that on top wet the tops and you soak it literally soak it so it's really saturated and you dab it down on top if you try and brush it it'll just split it and it makes it a right mess all right that should do it for now i like that dry all right so 10 15 minutes later it's all set it's rock hard that show you the other side that's how it's looking so yeah, it seems to be okay. I mean, there's a slight gap there, which obviously there's gonna be a bit of filling in there. Uh, you always get a bit of this, the overrun from it, which is annoying because you have to sand it off, but you know, it's not much you can do, it's gonna drip. So the next thing I think I'll do is use this P40, and then I'll put that in there, which is a fiberglass paste, and fill those gaps. Right, hopefully you can see this. You have to put it on a little bit thicker than what you need, but obviously the more you're putting on, the more you've got to flipping sand back down. So I'll let that go off now. Well, that's dried off now and that's pretty damn tough there. There's the inside. So that's nice and tough on there. 
Next I'm gonna do it. What I'm gonna do is fill these holes here. Those are all sorted now, and rock solid. That one and that one. Well, after what seems like an eternity of sanding, it's finally ready to be painted. So that's how it looks now. Um, it's turned out all right, actually. I mean, it's, you know, it's not perfect, but I've got rid of all the main cracks. It's smooth. And to be fair, there's probably a lot worse bikes on the grid already, <laughs> even with it looking like this. So yeah, sanded all it down. It's ready to be uh, primed now and filled that little piece there in again sanded them down and that's the other one which you saw earlier on and that's ready as well so next step is going to be literally to set this up and primer it and then once it's been primed fly it down again and then do a top coat and then i'll put stickers back on it and just just get it looking like i said presentable So there we go, there's two to three coats on it. Um, it's done a good job actually of highlighting areas, which obviously what primer's for, so there you can see a bit of a flat spot. There's the other panels, same again, 600 grit paper, wet and dry, flat them down, get them ready to be painted with top coat. So where I had obviously the main damage this side, it's pretty smooth there actually, I'm pretty pleased how that's turned out. All right, so I've got my panel ready to sand and I've got a bucket of water with a bit of soap and my 600 grit paper. So it's just literally a case of just sanding all that down, just giving it a light rub down everywhere. So it's the next day and the paint's all dry. So looking at it, I've got some smooth bits and then some bits that are not so smooth there. So it's where it might be a bit of overspray or something. So I'm speaking to someone I know that's a painter, he suggested starting off with some 1,500 grit, possibly 1,200 and wet and dry, flat and sand them all down and then start polishing with my polish machine. And that should bring it up to a nice shine. But these aren't too bad. These, these are quite a little bit better than the tank has. So I'm probably spending about, I don't know, five minutes maximum on each one. And I spent a little bit longer on this one, probably 20 minutes, rubbing uh, 10 minutes each one, and that's it. Right, ready to polish now. So I've got some polishing compounds, Shawl S20 and German made stuff. So it's gotta be good, right? <laughs> they, don't, they don't mess about. So I'll put some of that on, some soft pads, and then an even softer pad for the actual polishing. This is a, a cutting compound, so it'll be slightly more aggressive than a polish. So it should take that up to a nice shine and then a polish on top. All right, so that's it with it finished. I mean, it's definitely not come out as good as I was hoping it would, but it's better than it was. And there's a spare set. I think they're going to be fine on the bike. I'm just going to clean those side parts up a little bit. So there's one of the side panels. I mean, that's come out a little bit better. Same thing, obviously, just buffing it with the machine. So here's how the bike's looking now. So this is after a full rebuild over the winter. And yeah, I think it's turned out pretty nice. It's back to being pretty much mint condition again. 
painting on the tank looks all right now it's finished now that i've got all the stickers on and that's the side pieces i did so yeah pretty pleased with how they've turned out quite a few changes to the bike this year that's been spray painted the engine which looks a hell of a lot better and new fairing all around so again new stickers new fairings another tank spared over there a few things that look a bit battered still from last year that's from after the crash it damaged the exhaust so i've just stuck that back on and left it for now frames brand new all brand new powder coated all the controls across the dash are all new all new bars grips literally everything lap timer this time a little sticker to remind myself that i'm going to try out race shift for the first time so hopefully that'll go all right i had to buy a new shift sensor new coso new master cylinder pretty well everything everything across the bars was new back up and running as it was before the crash slight change for number board and I think everything else is as it was that's it now ready for this year's racing and hopefully i'll post some more videos when i uh, get to the track and yeah thanks for watching